Okay, so let's take a closer look at how uh, plants transport water, because we know that water is a vital ingredient for photosynthesis, and we know that plants can move water a tremendous distance. For example, here's a, a giant redwood called Hyperion. They actually gave this tree a name. It's located in the Humboldt Forest of California, and the people who discovered it, they won't say exactly where it's located, because they're quite worried that uh, people will get in there and do terrible things to it. And so to protect the tree, they, they're sort of keeping that a secret. But uh, this tree holds the record. It's, uh, it's 379.1 feet tall, which by comparison with the other structures over here, for example, this is uh, the ferry building tower in, in, in San Francisco, we can see that this really is an incredibly tr tall tree and the question we want to ask with uh, with this lesson is how exactly does this monstrosity get water all the way to the tippy top of that incredible height well there's a few things going on here that we need to talk about so let's have a look again at the behavior of water molecules if we zoom in really really closely here and and you've probably seen this if you ever looked at a, at a glass of water you've noticed that water has a surface tension and what's going on here simply is water molecules can cling to each other and the name we have for that is called cohesion cohesion so the word co means together and so when we talk about cohesive forces we're talking about forces of attraction between similar molecules in this case water attracting to water but not only does water attract to water water also has the ability to attract to other substances the name for that is adhesion so you want to keep these two names straight because kids are always getting them mixed up. Adhesion means attracting to someone else. So, so cohesion means you're attracted to somebody who is the same or you're working together, okay, like cooperating. Uh, whereas adhesion means an other. There's some other kind of molecule that you're clinging to. So if we look at the edge of water in a glass here, you'll notice that the water always seems to creep up the edge of the glass a little bit, just at the edges. And the reason is illustrated here. You can see that what's happening here is adhesive forces between the water and the glass molecules causes these water molecules to creep up a little bit uh, up against the side of the glass. Now, this can be rather interesting if you look over here on the right, because if you have a look at this adhesive force that takes place between uh, water and, say, glass, if I set up an experiment where I have these three vertical tubes, and you'll notice that as I, I go from left to right here, from tube number one, tube number two, tube number three, notice how the tubes are getting skinnier. But notice something else, too, that as the diameter of the tube shrinks and gets smaller and smaller, the ability of water to climb up that tube gets higher and higher. Well, if you think a little bit, you'll maybe remember that inside of a plant, the xylem tubes, which transport water, well, these are microscopic. These are actually individual cells. So in a plant with a very, very narrow, narrow xylem tubes, you can move water a considerable distance. You can have some fun with this, as you see here with these three stalks of celery. All we've done here is taken these stalks of celery and dipped them into some water that's been colored with food coloring. And you can see that the xylem is transporting the water with the food coloring up the height of the celery stalk and so we can actually watch if you want to we can actually watch this process take place another source of uh, of water is from the bottom up uh, and this is called root pressure so for example over here on the on the left hand side if i if i take a, a plant in a pot here and i chop off the top of the plant which isn't very nice but nonetheless we have a we have a stump left over and then i attach to the stump this tube filled with water i can actually watch the level of water here rise as pressure from the roots taking all that water, uh, forces water to go upwards. You can sometimes see this excess pressure in the morning uh, when you see all this water collecting on plants. We sometimes call this dew. But what's going on here essentially is that the root pressure has picked up so much water from the ground that it's literally pushing it up the plant and it's, it's, it's oozing out of its leaves. So if we have an overall look at something like, say, a tree, and we take all of these into consideration, uh, we get an idea of what's going on here. We have, for example, down here on the bottom, we have root pressure, which is placing water into the xylem tubules. And there's a considerable amount of pressure there that can raise the water a few feet. Now add to that the simple physics of cohesion and adhesion, that is to say cohesion, the water molecules cling to each other, and adhesion, they also cling to the walls of the xylem tubes. Between these two forces, we get water able to climb 
quite a distance vertically up the xylem of the, the plant. Now, at the end of it all, there's got to be something at the end, and, and there is. Transpiration at the end, this is where the water molecules are let out of the leaf in the form of water vapor, and of course they come out the stoma here. And so what's going on here is a continuous chain of connected water molecules. If you look at them here, you'll see that there's a continuous unbroken chain of water molecules that as they leave from the top, as one water molecule leaves from the top, it is replaced by a water molecule that's just beneath it. And so this system working together in harmony is what allows trees uh, as in the case of our Hyperion redwood giant, to, to move that water fantastic distances. Um, we can also have a look at the effect of water has on plant cells. We've talked about hypertonic, isotonic, and hypotonic in previous lessons, but just as a, as a recollection here, hypertonic means we have a very concentrated solution, and so what's going to happen is if you put, if you put a plant cell into a highly concentrated solution, the water will leave in an attempt to try to dilute the solution around it. Hypotonic is exactly the opposite. Here you've got a plant cell in a very, very uh, diluted solution, say pure distilled water and so what's going to happen is the water will enter the cell swelling it up trying to dilute the contents of the cell and the middle one of course isotonic means that the water going in and the water going out they're exactly the same now you can actually see this in process here with a little video I've got and so what's happening here is we have some uh, onion cells again and they've been stained and, but they've been placed into a hypertonic solution. Basically, these onion skin cells have been placed into a salt water solution. Well, what's going to happen then is that the, the water that's inside the onion skin cells is going to leave the cells trying to dilute that salt solution that's surrounding them. And so what happens inside, as you can see in this time-lapse photography, you can actually see the cytoplasm of the, shell, of the cell uh, shriveling up or shrinking up as it loses water trying to dilute uh, the outside environment. So we're moving water, but we mustn't forget that we're also moving sugar. So the plant takes up water from its roots, and it's delivered up the xylem. So here we see a xylem tube with water coming from the roots down here. So down here we have the roots, and it's coming up, say, to the leaves. Now, what's going on inside the leaves? Well, inside the leaves we have our chloroplasts, which are carrying out photosynthesis, making lots of molecules of glucose or sugar that you see right here. Now, we mentioned before that phloem cells, so they're shown here, here's our tube of phloem cells, that they have a companion cell, a buddy cell, who lives right beside them. Now the reason for this is going to be really clear in a second here. Uh, the phloem cells are so specialized that all they can really do is transport stuff, but they don't do much activity. So to get the sugar molecules from the cell into the phloem, the companion cell is the fellow who does that. Using his membrane, he moves glucose molecules from the leaf over here in green, he moves them over into the phloem. So what happens here is at the top of the phloem, up at the top of the tree, we get a very high concentration of sugar molecules. Well naturally what's going to happen is they're going to diffuse down the phloem down to the lower parts of the plant where the concentration of sugar is a lot less. Now down in the roots the, the opposite thing is going to happen. We have another companion cell down in the roots here and what he's going to do is he's now going to take these glucose cells and he's going to move them out of the phloem and he's going to stash them into a root cell so for this for example could be how a potato uh, takes uh, sugar molecules puts it down into its roots it will then convert the glucose into starch and hence you have the, the starchy content of your potatoes. So what we have here is this. We have water moving from a high concentration in the roots to a lower concentration. So it naturally goes from a high concentration to a low concentration. And ditto with the sugar. The sugar is doing exactly the same thing. It's going from a high concentration up by the leaves, up top. It's going down to a low concentration down below. And so what a plant is doing here is, it's, it's genius really, but it's so simple. A plant is simply making use of the natural concentration gradients of water for its xylem and, and sugar in its phloem. And they're just in the opposite direction, where the xylem is taking water from the roots in a high concentration, moving it up the plant where it's a lower concentration, 
that kind of movement is quite natural. We're going with the concentration gradient. And ditto, the same way around with the sugar. Uh, it's taking sugar in a high concentration up where the leaves are located and moving them down to a lower concentration where the roots are. And that's quite a natural movement. doesn't really require the expenditure of very much energy at all.